こんにちは、ジャパニーズアモのミサです。Hey guys, this is day two of the kanji challenge. The first kanji is super simple. This kanji means mouth. It's again a shoken moji, a pictograph that shows a person opening his or her mouth. The kun yomi of this kanji is kuchi, kuchi. Okay, so the word mouth is kuchi. So, for example, kuchi o akeru means to open the mouth. Okay, kuchi o akeru. The onyomi, again, if you're a beginner, don't worry about this, but onyomi is ko, ko. For example, koshu means bad breath, like koshu ga hidoi, like your breath smells horrible. <laughs> Again, this is very advanced. Like, Koto shiken means oral exam. So, kuchi and ko. The next kanji is this. This means to say, to tell. The verb to say is iu, iu. So, bad breath, iu. Right. So, this kanji has the radical mouth. And also lots of lines, <laughs> right? Those lines actually come from a different kanji, which is this. And this kanji is used, for example, as spicy, karai. Or if you read it as tsurai, that means hard or tough, heartbreaking. It has more than two kunyomi, and depending on the kunyomi, the meaning changes. So, bleh. anyway, karai, spicy, tsurai. Difficult. So basically, something not great. <laughs> But originally, this kanji was used as a sharp blade or a needle. So the kanji iu, to say, comes from the two kanji that means mouth and needle or something sharp. So now this kanji just means to say. But it used to mean to swear to God. You say something sacred and the needle represented the threat. If you break a promise, you'll get stabbed with a needle or a sharp knife. <laughs> so, the threat plus the mouth <laughs> meant to swear to God. And now it just means to say. Okay? So, in a lot of fonts, it just looks like there are four lines plus the mouth. But it's actually, you have a tilted line like this. And then you have a long line and then two shorter lines and plus the mouth. So just imagine there are four needles above the mouth. Okay, so and the top one is already tilted, like is ready to be used. <laughs> the third one. This means tongue. The kunyomi is shita. Shita. Shita is just simply the body part. In English, you can, for example, say mother tongue, right? But you say haha shita or haha no shita, it just means my mother's tongue, like literally. So, <laughs> nope. Shita is just the tongue. And again, this illustrates the tongue coming out the mouth. Without the kuchi radical, can mean thousand, but it's not actually related. Or without the top. Line, it can be a kanji that means old, but anyway, today、I、focus on the kanji shita. The next kanji is this. As you can see, it's the combination of to say and tongue. So, this kanji is used in the verb to speak, to talk. Hanasu. So, the kunyomi is hana. Okay, hanasu. So, to speak with friends, to talk to friends. Tomodachi to hanasu. Okay? Or do you speak English? You say, Ego ga hanasemasu ka? Okay, we use the potential form of the verb hanasu. Anyway, to say plus tongue, to speak, makes sense, right? So, kunyomi, hana, onyomi is wa, wa. For example, wadai, that's topic, wadai, or Shu wa. Shu, that's the onyomi of the kanji. Hand, the kunyomi is te. So the word hand is te, but 
It also has the onyomi shu shu. Uh, shu wa hand speak sign language. Okay, the last kanji I want to remember is this one. So again, it's the radical to say, and you might recognize this kanji. This kanji means five, right? And the bottom one is the mouth. Anyway, this kanji means language. And the only one you want to remember is go. For example, English, English language, we say e go, e go. Japanese language, nihon go, right? This is the kanji that you should focus on the onyomi. Uh, the kuyomi, again, if you're more advanced, that's kata, like kataru, kataru. Kataru is a quite formal word. It means to recite or to speak of uh, or to narrate. Like katarite, for example, means narrator, although we do use the word nareta as well. <laughs> but anyway, if you're a beginner, just focus on the onyomi, go, go. For example, gengo gaku, or sometimes just gogaku means linguistics. Uh, gogaku usually means study of foreign languages, whilst gengo gaku is linguistics. Or gogen, this is what I love, etymology. Gogen. Anyway, the radical makes sense, but the top right kanji doesn't really make sense, right? It means five. Why? Maybe the person speaks five languages. Impressive. <laughs> This go is simply used for the phonetic reason. So remember I said we have mainly four types of kanji. We already talked about shoke moji, pictographic one. And this one is kese moji. Kese moji. This literally means form sound kanji. So this is like phonetic ideographic kanji. So 90%, 80%. Basically, a lot of kanji are this kese moji, like a radical or part of the kanji uh, shows its meaning, represents its meaning. So for this kanji go, the radical tells you the story. It's something to do with mouth, the radical to say. The language is something you say, speak, right? So it makes sense. The right part is just for the sound. Okay, we should use the radical that means to say. Makes sense. Uh, the right part, oh, I'm out of the idea. Let's just use the kanji that has the same sound. Okay, let's use the kanji five. Da -da! <laughs> Here we have the kanji go. Okay, so there are loads of kanji like that. So you will encounter lots of kanji that have a weird part that has nothing to do with the meaning but it's just used for the phonetic sound but once you remember the onyomi of the certain kanji for example here go you can kind of guess the onyomi of other kanji because you know the kanji go you can guess that this kanji also should be read like go another quick example you don't have to remember this kanji today but uh, the kanji for older sister, we write like this, okay? And uh, the radical, the left part, means woman, makes sense. The right part usually means city. A woman in a city is an older sister. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, could be, right? A lot of my friend's sisters do live in cities. <laughs> but again, the reason is because this kanji is a uh, kese moji. The left part, the radical, uh, represents the meaning, and the right part is just the sound. But that's for the onyomi, okay? Kunyomi is different. Kunyomi is ane, so it has nothing to do with the right part either. For example, the kanji sad, kanashi, um, remember? This kanji's onyomi is hi. This kanji is both kese moji, sound form kanji, and also kai moji. Kai moji is the kanji that has two parts, and each of them has its meaning, 
and you combine two meanings and you make a new kanji or with a new meaning. So remember sad it was the kanji that meant torn apart plus heart. So two different meanings made the new meaning new kanji sad, right? So it's definitely a kai moji. But this is also a kese moji in a way because the kanji uh, that means torn apart, it's onyomi is hi, hi. And the onyomi of the kanji sad is also hi. Okay, so they share the same onyomi. So it's both kai moji and kese moji. But anyway, you don't have to remember all these terms. Not important. To be honest, a lot of Japanese people don't know these terms or have learned the terms but forgotten. <laughs> okay, so don't worry, like don't bother with all these terms. Just focus on the actual kanji of the video. Okay. All right, let's review the kanji we had today. This one. Mouth. The kunyomi is kuchi. The onyomi is ko. Tsugi. This one means to say. And kunyomi is i with the okurigana u. So the verb to say is iu, iu, iu. Right. I didn't tell you this earlier, but the onyomi of this kanji is gen. Gen. For example, this means a language. Remember the second kanji? That means language, right? And the onyomi is go, right? So together it's gen go, gen go. Okay, again, go does mean language, but it's usually only used as suffix. Like Nihon go, Japanese language. As the word language on its own, you have to say gengo. Okay, gengo. Linguistics, gengo gaku. And the only kanji that's left is tan, shita, shita. Shita does mean under or down. Like shita eiku means to go down. This kanji. Shita means tan. Okay. All right. I hope you found this lesson helpful as well. If you liked it, please give a thumbs up and share it with your friends or people. <laughs> and if you can support me on Patreon, I'd forever be grateful. And keep studying hard, guys. All right. Ja, mata ne. Bye bye.